So the problem that we have with the secular contemporary models is that very often in the name of separating religion from state, there is no morality in politics. This is not acceptable for us. What we want, and you know what? Now people are coming back to this. We need more ethics in politics. Why? Because economy is so powerful that now we have the president, the former president, Nicolas Sarkozy, telling us we want to moralize capitalism. Welcome. So that's not, that's not possible. That's, not, that's just even. But what is very important, moralizing, to put some ethics in economy. So this is what we are saying, and the Muslims should get it clear. Instead of struggling against the secularists, the very important point is, tell me, which principles and what is the ethical ground that you have in the way you deal with politics? Because as Muslims dealing with politics, the starting point is the principles we are talking about, transparency, no corruption, Justice for all. This is what we want with politics. And the problem is that if I talk like this, anyone who is not a Muslim here can understand what I mean by this. Ethics in politics. You are Christian, you are Buddhist, you are whatever. You come and you understand that we are basing this on our ethics. And it's normal for a Christian to come with his or her ethics. Now we are discussing about our contemporary ethics. Do we have contemporary and common challenges? Of course we have contemporary and common values. Many of the people here are seeing what is happening and they are not happy with the world culture, they are not happy with corruption, they are not happy with the behaviors of the people. We have common ground on ethics. Let us come with this and reconcile politics and democracy with the ethical ground which is necessary. So the way we want to challenge the secularists is not by coming with, oh, we are having, everything is the same in Islam. Yes, it's all connected, but it's not confused. You get the point? It's connected. Our ethical ground, our religious principles are connected, but it's not confused. We don't deal with al-ibadat the way we deal with al-mu'amalat. We have two methodologies. And this is the starting point of the Islamic tradition. You get my point here? It's very critical, this discussion, because this is where, when we come with Islam and democracy, we can say, well, yes, we have principles. Yes, we have six principles that we are acknowledging as Muslims, and then we can deal with the democratic principles. Now, as a matter of principle, what we are saying, we don't want to separate and to divorce state from ethics. And what is coming from our religion are ethical principles. And we want also to be clear that in any way we should accept to replace the religious reference imposed onto the state by economic powers imposed onto the state. Because what is happening in our democracies now in the West, we removed religion and we put economy. And economy is deciding over the state. So we can do whatever, as I was saying, you elect, but decisions are taken elsewhere. As Bill Clinton was saying when he was the president of the United States of America, he was saying only 1% of the people are, are running this country. And he was referring to all the lobbies and the multinationals and the people who have the money. So you can be an American and, and you can vote, but at the end, your vote is nothing if you don't have money. So today you can have a very great democracy in the United States of America, but when you are a black citizen, you are five times more likely to be killed and to go to death penalty than a white man. What's, what, is, what is this kind of democracy? when? based on your color and based on your money, you can be found guilty more easily than someone who has money and is white. That's not the democratic principles and there is no, uh, uh, e there is no ethics in this, uh, in this perception of democracy. So we have to improve in this and to understand what we mean. So when I'm so talking about Islam and democracy and with all these principles, this is where we come with the principles and we say two things. First, we don't differentiate and we don't want to divorce between ethics and politics. This is one. And the second is, as I said, the principles might be the same. The models should be national, based on the narrative based on your society. So now, your society is not the same as even the Indonesian society. You need to find your model. You need, in fact, to improve your model to uh, suite what is happening, uh, uh, to suite what is happening within the country. 
by dealing with di this diversity, by improving these democratic processes, by being very consistent with the principles at the beginning and the implementation of these principles in this country. So this is where any society should be critical and not only to be obsessed with other models, but to find a way to improve its own model from within. So the democratic Malaysian model is in, 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 in a process, always in a process, and has to be criticized from within in order to be more efficient, ethically speaking and politically speaking. Now, with all this, and that comes to my conclusion connected to human rights now, I think that what uh, uh, is very important as well is that for years, and once again, we need to, 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 to get that right. For years, the Muslims uh, in the Muslim majority countries and even the uh, Islamic parties, and even it was the case here, but also in the Arab world, were saying human rights is coming from the West. It's not really our business. It's not really us. It's another philosophy. And once again, I was, and some came with an Islamic universal declaration of human rights. I was at the beginning quite critical with this by saying, what do you want to say? Let us come once again, not to the way it's phrased, but also to the substance and come to, you know, what is said in the, in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ قَرَّمْنَ بَنِي آدَمْ We gave dignity to human beings, to the, 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 the children of Adam, meaning humanity as a whole and what we are protecting here, and the way we have to assess this. And you will see, when it comes to human rights, that once again, if you come to the principles, of course, there, is, there are principles on which we agree, and I don't have myself any problem with the, uh, 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 the Declaration of Human Rights. The only problem that I have with the Declaration of Human Rights, it's not about the substance itself, and some are saying, yes, but in the... Uh, in the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, you have something which has to do with, you know, you can change your religion, and in Islam you can't. Uh, I, I'm, I'm challenging even this by saying it might be that you don't have the only uh, Islamic position on this, because the people who are saying, if you change your religion, you should be killed, are taking one position among the scholars. There are many positions and one clear position on the 8th century by saying the prophet, peace be upon him, never killed someone because he or she left his or her religion. It never happened. It happened because the people at that time were in fact war betrayers. They were changing camps just to take information and to come back and to betray the community on this very specific situation. But in the book I wrote on the messenger, uh, peace be upon him, I'm, I'm quoting many situations where the, pre the, the prophet, peace be upon him, never killed anyone. And he, 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 he just left the people. And we need also to understand that there are many opinions among scholars, many uh, positions that are coming from scholars. So I may accept someone who is telling me I have this very close to, to, to me in, in, uh, in my life, people who think, no, we have to be strict on this, and I'm challenging this, and, and in the discussion, even the Mufti of Egypt once uh, had to, to, to come and to explain, even against his own people in Egypt, that the position he had uh, and still has on this was we are not going to kill the people who are changing the religion, but we have to respect as long as also, not as long as, it's not good to put a condition here, it's what we hope from them is really to be respectful towards the people that they are leaving. And I'm always saying this to anyone who is converting to Islam, when you come to Islam, whatever is your take on who you left, you respect the people and their belief. This is dignified attitude when you decide for yourself, respect, who decided elsewhere and uh, otherwise. So I think here that this is something which is very important in our understanding of uh, human rights. Uh, it's something that we have to, 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 to deal with. The, the main concern about, I have with human rights is not very much about the substance from an Islamic viewpoint.